Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and every month here on the channel we have a sponsored video from Plex where I take a deep dive into some features of this media serving application that is uh, quite feature rich to say the least, so it gives us a lot of content to work with. And in the last couple of weeks we've been looking at uh, their DVR feature that allows you to record live TV but also watch live TV if you want. That feature works within your home but also outside the home too. Really cool stuff. Uh, we covered it extensively and I'll put some links down below so you can learn more about it. Now hardware compatibility with that feature has been slightly limited up until now so I know a lot of folks who have Android tablets like this one or an Android phone uh, wanted to be able to access that DVR feature and they couldn't yet but now you can. They did uh, finally release that feature on Android. We're going to be taking a look at it in just a second. They also added another feature for Android devices where you can use Plex as a media player for things that you might download while you're out of the house without having to go put it back on your server. So we'll take a look at how the media player feature works and we'll also see how we can watch live TV now with Plex on an Apple TV as well. So lots of new stuff to take a look at and we're going to dive into it right now. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that this video is a paid sponsorship by Plex. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own and they are not reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's get into it starting with Android and the Plex DVR. So let's start off now on my Android tablet here, and you'll notice that I've got now a program guide as well as access to the recording schedule. So I can click on program guide here. I can go over here to watch now and see uh, what might be on TV right now waiting for me. So if we want to take a look at uh, Maury here and see uh, who the father is, we can load that up here. It's going to contact my uh, Plex server that is currently running on my network attached storage device, and it will soon start streaming uh, the live TV here for me to take a look at. They've also added some time shifting features now to all versions that support this live TV playback. So I can uh, pause this. It will record here in the background, and I can skip backwards or forwards here now as well. So you have full access to all the features you might have on the Android TV version now. Additionally, I can also set things to record in this interface too. So if I scroll down maybe to some things that are on later this afternoon, let me just back out of here for a second and go over to uh, maybe some upcoming movies here. And if I want to uh, record the hangover that starts in 44 minutes, I can just go ahead and uh, click on the record button here and it will add that to the library and it will automatically get that going. And of course, that recording now will be visible on all of my uh, other Plex clients all over the house. Now you do need to make sure that the Plex server that's running on your computer or NAS device is up to date. You also need to make sure that your version of Plex running on your device is equally up to date and uh, that will happen through the Google Play Store. And what's cool about this is that it all works seamlessly. So if you're away from home and you wanted to make sure that your favorite show is going to get recorded, you can take out your phone, for example, load up Plex and set that recording to happen. You can either watch it remotely from your hotel room or something or have it waiting for you when you get home. That's one of the strengths of Plex is that it has a very seamless connection, whether you're uh, on a mobile device or on something plugged into your TV. Uh, there's also, of course, a version here that runs on phones and that uh, DVR feature is now visible on here too. So I can go back to my program guide and start watching stuff live on here too if I want. So it's the same experience whether you're on a phone uh, or on a tablet device. And you can see here we're now watching some uh, weather channel stuff here on our uh, mobile device. So lots of flexibility here for getting stuff done. Now one other feature they just added to the Android app is it can now work as a local media playback utility. So if you are on the road and you get some media on your phone that you want to play back, Plex can do that for you, just like other media player apps do. So for example here I've got a movie that I bought a while ago called Nintendo Quest. It was something that they released as a DRM free movie upon purchase. So I've got the MP4 file here. I can click on this and you can see it gives me the option to open it up with Plex. So I'll say just once here, you can always set it to always if you want as well. And you can see here it pulls up all the metadata about this just like it would if I had this residing on my Plex server. But in fact, it's on the SD card installed on this tablet. I can click the play button here and it will begin uh, playing the movie for me. It doesn't look like it records any bookmarking or anything else that you might get from a, a file that originated on your Plex server, but you are able to play back a number of different formats on here. Uh, the performance of this I'm finding varies based on the device. So some phones which aren't as powerful may not do so well with some high bitrate video, whereas a uh, more powerful tablet, for example, might. So you may want to play with this a little bit before you head out on the road, but it does play back a good number of formats. You might have to 
buy the unlocked version of the app, which is a couple of dollars if you don't have that purchased already. However, it does not require a Plex Pass subscription to work. So a nice little uh, add-on here so you can use Plex as your media uh, playback app for both local files on the device as well as things that might reside on your server. So now let's take a look and see what's new with the Apple TV. They've added some live TV watching to this one too. So I'm going to plug this in and we're going to check it out. Okay, so we've got Plex now running on my Apple TV and we've got a few options up here, fewer than we have on other platforms. And I'll talk about that in a second. But if you want to watch live TV and you got everything set up and everything updated, uh, you'll now see a live TV icon on here and it'll pull up a, a similar interface to what we've seen on some of the other platforms. So if you want to watch Mori again, I can uh, click on Mori and start tuning that. I have found the Apple TV is just a little slower in getting its uh, live TV up and running here, but uh, once it does stream up, everything seems to be working just fine. I usually connect my Apple TV with Ethernet. It's just a little more reliable. Like the other platforms, we do have the ability to time shift, so I can tap on the controller here to uh, pause. I can then uh, swipe to the left here and uh, resume and play back to where I had uh, already recorded. So you do have some ability to do some time shifting on here. But the one thing you cannot do at the moment is uh, set up recordings. This only plays back live TV with the time shifting feature, but you can't schedule anything. Uh, you can though watch stuff after it's done being recorded because as you'll recall from my overview of the DVR, when you do record something, it puts it into a regular Plex library that's accessible to all of your devices on the network. So I can go over to a DVR folder here, for example, and uh, find everything that my Plex DVR had previously recorded. So that's going to do it for this update on Plex. A lot of new features for Android users, and I know a lot of people were waiting for that uh, Android phone and tablet client to get updated. So now they've got it. iOS has had it, of course, but now iOS also gets the time shifting too. So lots of new updates here. The feature is becoming uh, definitely more fleshed out as time goes on. They have uh, committed to putting this on Roku, and that's something that I know a lot of people have been eager to see because there's not too many DVR options on Roku yet. So when that happens, we'll cover that. And it also looks like they're focusing on getting this working for smart TVs as well, at least according to their uh, most recent update on their feature set there. So that's going to do it for this one. I want to thank Plex again for sponsoring the channel, and we'll have more with Plex coming up in the very near future. This is Lon Seib, and thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Tangential Soup Podcast, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.